I'm headed now. Hold up. Let that focus. Let's get that focus right. Yes, sir. The land of enchantment. You heard me? What's new in New Mexico? You heard? Say, we about to see about that. Say, so tell me why I forgot why I was coming on this side of the coast. I Googled a place just looking around trying to find something. And they had a place called Nobody Calls Me Chicken. Tell me why I'm looking at the menu. I'm like, why y'all talking about chicken? And it's a whole vegan spot, bro. <laughs> I just really didn't even pick it. I said a chicken spot. I'm fresh off the road. Before we go to Walmart, let's stop, get us a little something to eat for lunch. You know what I mean? Because I just made it in. I got tofu and waffles. I ain't never ate tofu before. So this is the first time for us, man. They had a lot of people in there. They got it in a little box. I got a fork. I got something called a thirsty tea. I don't know if that's supposed to be just a regular tea or what. But we definitely about to find out what this French toast and tofu. It smell good. Oh, look at the presentation. Oh, yeah. Mmm, it smell good. You got butter. You got the tofu. You got the brown... Not the brown sugar. You got the, oh, powdered sugar. They got powdered sugar on there. Let me pour some of this syrup on there because we about to eat that. Yes, sir. I don't know if it's going to seep through the box or not. Definitely about to find out. Oh, yeah. It seeped through the box. We ain't tripping. They gave me some syrup. Got some butter. We finna see what it's all hidden for. Yes, sir. Okay, let's get this. Be honest, it's got this on, this on like a whole little pike. I wonder if I could just, yeah, look at the. I'm gonna try to. Oh, that's good. For my first time trying tofu, I'm gonna say it ain't bad. Whatever the bread is, ain't bad. I can't believe it. I've always been told that tofu was nasty. That's pretty good. That French toast, fluffy, warm. They warmed up that butter, and they got that syrup. Mmm. It says like your mama made it. I can't believe I was told tofu was bad. Like it tasted bad. I know you gotta soak it and all that, but I don't know why they say that. It wasn't bad. For how messy this is. I'm going to have to give it a 7. It wasn't bad. It's definitely a messy box. Definitely unexpected 7. Because I ain't never ate tofu. I'm like, boy, this got to be nasty. I swear it's about to be nasty. But that French toast, though, I'm going to get that a 9. Let's try this thirsty tea. Okay, it's just a regular tea. It wasn't nothing special. Anyhow... Let's get our bus to Walmart so we can buy some stuff so we can go get some sand. That's what we gonna do, get some sand, yep. I don't know what's going on, but I can't find nothing to put a jar or some sand in. Unless I get like a uh, envelope. I done looked in the craft area. I'm in the lamp area, I'm so lost in here. All I'm trying to do is find me a little container. Oh, I think I got it. Travel size container. Boy, it's crazy in here. Probably the cheapest I'm gonna find, to be honest with you. I ain't trying to spend a fortune and bring some white sand back either. Nah. I think I done found the cheapest route to get it. You heard me? I ain't trying to be all fancy with it and whatever else. I'm just trying to get me some sand on the low. So I think I found it. All this other stuff contained, they want money. All right, we about to get out of here for their kitchens. When I tell you I'm upset about this trip, bro, everything is literally temporarily closed. The thing that's supposed to carry you across from spot to spot, I don't know what you call it. It's like uh, you get inside it and it take you across the way and you could do a whole trail. That's closed. The AM track is closed. Boy, what I come for this week? But listen, the one thing I did find on side of the road I just stopped to go to is this thing I always wanted to walk across. It's like on the bridge. It be in the movies, you heard me? So I'm trying to walk across that right quick because I'm disappointed. 
And then I can't see no air balloons because that only happened in October. So walk across this bridge is just one of them things I wanted to do. Y'all know when you be walking across, they be having like, you know, some of them be having locks on them and whatnot. You know, they be in movies, people be shooting videos and whatnot. But you walk across it and you can get to the other side and you cross the highway, basically. But I'll show you a little bit. It's very windy up here. Very windy. But I am so disappointed. Like literally two weeks ago, everything I looked up was open. I don't understand it. Ain't nothing new in New Mexico, I can tell you that. Yeah. Ain't nothing you won't see either. Boy, I ain't even seen a cactus yet. That's how disappointed I am. I'm close enough to Arizona that I should see a cactus. Okay? All right. Well, that's how you get up here, basically. Have you walked across it? Let me go ahead and get back to the car. Get back on the road. See how I can figure something out. Pull this all together. Even y'all graffiti trash, by the way. I just want to be a hundred about that. I ain't seen no group graffiti, but I see graffiti everywhere. You too close to California not to have no talent. I'm going to be honest with you, big brother. I'm on complete sand. Ain't no road, ain't no gravel, nothing. That's cocaine white. Welcome to the National White Sand Park in Albuquerque. I want to say this is probably going to be the best part of this trip. Okay. I'm out here in just socks. I done took my shoes off. I got to let Mother Nature touch my soul. I couldn't do it any other way. It's below 40 out here. So, it's still a little bit warm, though, even though it is below 40, though. But I just hate to take my shoes off in a path that's least traveled. I don't know how I'm going to get up the mountain, though. I don't know. I'm about to have to run it. Oh. Oh, come on. Come on, killer. You got it. Come on. I should have had on shoes. Oh, come on. Whew. Boy, I'm going to broke my ankle trying to do that. <laughs> oh, God. I'm going to broke my ankle trying to do that, man. Oh, they got people walking everywhere through here, look like. Oh, and let me show them, too. So I ain't no cap. I ain't no cap in my wraps. Oh, and my feet freezing. This sand cold. But man, it's so pretty through here. My feet gonna be frostbit by the time I get back. Ooh wee. In a deserted place like this, you know it's only right. I can't leave without one. Welcome to Burn After Writing. The most profound act of kindness. Listen, I couldn't narrow this down, so I decided to pick four different ones for those profound acts of kindness, okay? The first one I'm gonna have to say is about Holly. I try to pay as close attention as I can to what's said around kids. And, you know, not try to influence them in the wrong way. Because I've been influenced in the wrong way before. And if you lead wrong, you can't lead right. So I can understand that. And I guess while I was going through these things when I first started my YouTube, 
I wasn't paying mind to what was being said in front of her. So I said, man, I think it'd be cool we do an episode. You know, and she um came out of nowhere and was like, I want to get on the episode. I want to do the YouTube with you. And I said, oh, man, you want to do that? I do it with you, thinking that's like a bonding moment for us. And, you know, it's going to be fun. We hang around all the time, you know. She went and did a whole glitz in her glam. She wanted her hair done, had on her first little outfit. I mean, living it up. And it was dope. Ain't nothing against that. We got in the car and it's something I say to everybody. Hey, man, take your time. Breathe it out. We here to have fun. We ain't here to do nothing crazy. She says, oh, I'm fine. She says, I'm here to help you because you need it. And I said, huh? And she says, yeah, nobody wants to get on the YouTube. And she was like, you don't ever ask for help. And if this is the way I can help, I'm going to do it. I swear to God, like I never brought that up to nobody, but that almost made me cry. Like I was in my feelings and I couldn't really show that to her. That like when I really needed help, nobody would help me. People who wouldn't help me that I would have literally killed somebody for. You know what I mean? And not one time did they say, Oh, bro, I got you. I'm going to do it for you or anything like that. And for a kid to see me trying my best at something and I really need help, but I'm, it's hard to ask for it. That she just came out of her way and said, I got you. I'm going to help you. That was one of those acts of kindness that really touched me. Yeah. So thank you for helping me when nobody would. And I owe you so much gratitude and so much in life i know that heart you got in you you're gonna touch the world in a way they'll never know but that's one act of kindness for me oh give me a second right quick saying got in my eye the second most profound act of kindness and it was really just a big moment for me was when i was in octavia and I found the natural spring. And everybody know I'm one of them health hack kicks. And you know I love natural things. I love to eat the plant based. I love to have better options. I was taken on a trip in Octavia, Oklahoma. I think that's what it's called. I could be wrong on that. But I was taken there for a little getaway trip. And I found the natural spring. And me being me, I asked Audrey while we was right there. I say, man, you would drink this natural spring water with me? And she didn't hesitate. Like, she looked at me and said, yeah. So we got down in the rocks. Clear water, I'm telling you. And we get two handfuls. And this was the fountain of youth. I swear to God, I was so refreshed in my soul. It's like I had just woke up. Got hit with an energy pack. I swear to God, but it's like, I'm so judged on a lot of things. It's hard to bring people places. It's hard to do stuff with people. And they don't be like, he weird. You feel me? Like, I hate to be isolated, but that's how I've been my whole life because I always do my own thing. I'm like, I was a gangster in band. I played the trumpet, you heard? Like, and people don't know that, so I get judged for being, I guess, in a combination of things. And for you not to judge me, that was just crazy to me. And for you to get down in this water, not knowing if you could get sick because you know how they try to say, if you do this, you can get sick, parasites and whatever else. Like... Real talk, I really respect you having that moment with me and we making it through that. So thank you for that. And I feel like that was one of them profound moments for me. Thank you. I gotta climb my, oh. I gotta try to climb that little mountain right quick. So y'all give me, give me a swift second. I'm about to, let me back up. And I'm still walking on complete sand, you heard? Yeah. Oh look, y'all ready? Watch that boy, he about to get in there. Okay, okay, okay. Oh. <laughs> I didn't get in there like I was supposed to. They had a soft spot. I got sand all on my jacket. Killer. <laughs> yeah. It'll be well worth it when I get there. I got a crawl. Thank you. All that military background, I done made it to where I needed to be. My feet frozen. They got people out here. Got some stubbles. Let me dust myself up. I'm gonna be taking sand back to Oklahoma. But you're not allowed to take the sand here. I guess you can't do no collecting, they said. You know, like one of them weird Bible creatures. 
Loch Ness Monster or something through here. It might swallow them up. It might be a sand snake. Never heard of it, but be the key to figure it out. I'm going to have to say my third most profound act of kindness, I'm going to have to give it to Jay. Hopefully he don't feel weird for me saying this, but I started my season on time because of Jay. I had recorded a couple episodes. This is the introduction season when I very first started. When I know nothing about the camera I got, really. I don't know nothing about editing. I don't know nothing about post, color grade, nothing. So I shoot some episodes, right? I try to plug my camera into my computer. Well, it says I couldn't move the files over. I needed the chip because my computer was getting old. I had a computer from 2014, Apple, but I never used it. I just stored my music on it. So I figured it wouldn't be bad, you know? I told Jay, I said, bro, I just want you to know I really completed the mission and I ain't slack and I ain't slipping. I said, I did not know I was going to need a chip for my computer to move the files over and I could use them on the iMovie thing. And he said, what you mean? I said, well, I can't start on uh, Good Friday, which was April 15th. And that's when you know my season started, the introduction season, which was the tester season. He said, well, how much the chip is? It was an accessory chip, which I think was like $60. I said, bro, I ain't tripping on it. I'm going to just have to start later this month than I planned because I was going to start on the 15th. You know, and we just talking. We normally always tell each other these things and nothing comes from it. He said, I want to see you win. He said, you always help me. You always dealt for me. He said, come pick up the money and go get the chill. I said, nah, nah, bro, I got it. I said, I ain't worried about it. Don't trip on it. I said, I ain't doing all that to do all that to have you do all that. He said, man, dog, you done done a lot for me, bro. Come pick up the money, go get that chip. He said, all right, bring me to the store and I'll go get you the chip to put in the computer. And I love him to death. The thing they may not know about him is that this man got one of the biggest hearts. If you think I got a big heart, he got one of the biggest hearts because he didn't have to do that. Friend or not friend, that's not your problem, not your situation. He bought me that chip and that's why y'all got what y'all get. And y'all still getting what y'all get because of Jay and that chip because I never updated my computer yet which I'm about to get alone and get that done. But y'all still watching me do me because of Jay. So give him a thank you always. And I'm going to say that was one of them profound acts of kindness that I could never repay. Like I could try all day, but I could never repay it. I got one more for y'all. I'm going to do four. I was thinking about doing six, but I ain't want to hold y'all up. I'm trying to bear trap myself and put my footprints down so I can make it back. You heard me? After we do our business. I'm going to have to say the most profound act of kindness, which is my last one. Number four, Mr. Bangs from LaGrange High. Thank you, sir. I say that with the most of respect. Thank you. Mr. Bangs told me I was facing juvenile life, and he was a principal at LaGrange High. If he come to my hearing, everything. Only people showed up to my hearing to support me was Mr. Bangs, Mr. Q, and my mama. Not nobody else stood tall for me when I was facing juvenile life. I'm going to state that now. Nah. But he come in there and he says, I thought this was all just a phase for you. I said, what you mean? He said, I don't see how a straight A student wrapped up in gang activities, supposedly a leader of one of these groups. And he says, I really just thought it was a phase. And I said, I'm just what my environment is. I can't do nothing about that. Either I fight them or they kill me. Either I go to war with them or die anyway. I said, so I'm going to fight for my turn. You know, and he said, I really just thought it was a phase. You a smart kid. And they come back and they do the whole hearing after this point. Mr. Q, he stand tall for me. He says, uh, Mr. Beverly ain't never been no gangster. He said, I don't understand where y'all even get that from. He defended me and my mama in there crying because now they would associated me with a gang talking about I'm the leader or something. Whatever that was, they was trying to convince her and convince everybody in the room to railroad me. Behind somebody trying me first. I ain't never played with nobody and you know me. I never come at me first, I'm going to give you that. And through that whole time that thing happening, they leave the meeting over, like the little hearing over, and they about to go deliberate and come back. Mr. Bang said, now he says, I really thought you was a good kid. I still think you are a good kid. He says, um, the only thing I can tell you is to run until you 18. He said, then all this case will be closed. He said, run until you 18. And he turned his back on me, and I said, what? Man, you ain't had to tell me twice. I booked it running up out of there, went straight out the door, got my ass out of there, and I want to say, you giving me my second chance? I never knew what that meant then, but I know what it meant now. I want to say I love you for that. 
helping me escape a problem that you knew I really never wanted to be a part of. I ain't never been in the streets doing nothing cool because they was cool to do, you know? You really seen that I was trapped in an environment that I been trying to get out of. I never asked to be a part of this. I never asked to be jumped every day I gotta walk home to school because we live on a certain side of town. So I wanna say everything in my heart, thank you for helping me escape that because I won't ever go back. I wanna let you know right now, Mr. Banks, I did not waste your second chance. I know you probably never see this or nothing, but like it's in my soul, I never waste that second chance. But I wanna say thank you. I did not waste that second chance you gave me. You probably never know that, but I just want you to know you did save one kid from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Now I'm gonna get off of here and steal some sand. <laughs> I'm joking, let me quit job. That's my burn after writing. Um, this is a national park. I ain't trying to catch no felony cases, you heard me? Cause they got people out here, so I'ma burn that later. But uh, I'ma holler at y'all, man. I love y'all. And to everybody who I shared they part of their story, it ain't no disrespect. I hope not. Hopefully it didn't take no offense to nobody. I love y'all, man. We gotta go find us something to snack on. I need to give me a street corn. You heard a street car from the trenches. <laughs> As you can see, nothing went as planned for me. Excuse my behavior for earlier. I feel like I was getting negative and I don't wanna get it out to nobody. And that's not who I am. It was just, man. I should have known better when I really couldn't find nothing online. I should have skipped New Mexico and came back. Because I was told the best time to come was probably October. Because they do a whole balloon festival and all that. That probably would have been better than kind of what I got. You know what I mean? But we still going to end the day on a positive note. We still going to get through it. And I found some churros at a place called Churro or Corn. And... I got me a street club straight from them people, you heard? And I got a churro field. Let's see what that churro is hitting for. Mmm. Did not disappoint. It's caramel in there. And I don't even like caramel. Mmm. I'm going to get out of eight. It's hot. The caramel filling is to perfection. Ever since I did that episode with Emerald, I've been chasing them churros, man. They really good. Not everybody make a good street cop. So we're going to see if it live up to what it's supposed to. I got all kind of stuff on the bottom. Let's see. Mmm. Oh my God. The smoke flavor from the corn all the way down to the chili lime. It's a 10. I'm sorry. Churro or corn, y'all did not let me down, bro. And y'all was in the back of y'all little market, so I was a bit nervous. But oh my god, and you juicy, the lime and everything on here is good. They need to show them how to make these at the chilies. You know how they got that marry me chicken? This that marry me corn right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's spicy too. It got a kick. Mmm. I'm sorry. That was the best street cop I have ever eaten. That's the best thing I ate today. I'm going to be honest with you. Best thing I ate today. Well, that's the end for us, man. We got to get back on the road in about roughly four hours. I love y'all. I did what I could with this episode. I'll get y'all back on the next one, man. Thank y'all. See y'all next week. It ain't much to say about this trip. Y'all know how I felt about it. But we made it to New Mexico. Y'all know where we headed next? <laughs> to be honest, I don't even know.